looking at it. Uh, one final uh, comment I want to make is that we can go until about 655. Um, and then if you need more time, we can we can resume at nine o'clock uh, this evening. So we may or may not be able to get through everything. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started here. All right, so question number two, it looks like you've not uh, worked through this one yet. Is that right? Yeah, I haven't. Okay, so g of n minus two, that's what you're, that's what you're asked to, to calculate here. What it's saying is take n minus two and put it in wherever you see an x. So you're going to put it in there and you're going to put it in there. Okay, so it's parentheses n minus two squared minus six over two times parentheses n minus two. So again, wherever you see an x, you're going to substitute in for, um, for your answer there. All right. Yeah. Now you'll notice that none of the answers match this. So you do have to simplify. Um, let's just do the top real quick. Or I'm sorry, the bottom, because it's much faster. Do you see how you get 2n minus 4 when you distribute the 2 into both? Yeah. So that gets you down to two answers. It actually gets you down to a and c. Um, you don't want to guess, but that you know that is something to consider here. In the numerator, though, you're going to want to FOIL. You're going to want to write n minus 2 times n minus 2 minus 6, and you're going to want to FOIL this. Do you remember that from, from class? Yeah. OK, so it's n times n. That's n squared. n times minus 2, minus 2n, minus 2 times n, minus 2n again. Minus 2 times minus 2 is positive 4. And then don't forget to bring down that minus 6. Okay, so you combine like terms, minus 2n minus 2n is minus 4n, positive 4 minus 6 is minus 2, that's your numerator. And that's probably enough now to determine that it is letter, letter C. Okay. Okay, so it looks like you've done 3 and 4 already, and uh, like you said, we can go back and look at those if there are questions. Um, so I'm looking at page with nine as being the next one. Is that what you're seeing? Um, I think it was five. Let six. me double check. I may not have gotten that page. Let me just double check here. Uh, uh -huh. Let me just see here if I grab them all or not. Yeah, I don't, I do not have, do not have five. You'll have to have mom send the picture of that. So let's go to, she can send that over and get that in later. Um, Nine, is that, uh, is that okay yeah. for us to start there? Yeah. All right. All right, so number nine here. Okay. Find the slope intercept form of the equation of the line that passes through two comma two and is perpendicular, that's very important, to the line uh, f of x equals minus one fourth x plus six. Mm -hmm. So with this, with this equation here, what is the slope of this equation? Negative one fourth. Negative one fourth, good. Now the perpendicular slope, there's a couple of ways to do it. Some students like the words opposite reciprocal, um, flip and then negate. Do you remember either of those from class? Do either of those? Yeah. Which do you prefer, opposite reciprocal or flip negate? I think we do opposite reciprocal. So opposite means to change its sign, right? So if it's yeah. negative, it's now going to be positive. And then the reciprocal is you put the bottom number in the top, top number in the bottom. So the perpendicular slope is 4. You're totally done with, uh, with, with this equation. You don't need it anymore. You can actually throw it away, all right? Now, out of your answers, notice that B has a slope of 4 and C has a slope of 4, OK? Mm -hmm. So we, can, we know we can get rid of a couple of those already. Um, so if we write the equation in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, okay, we put the value of 4 in for m, and we need an x and a y. And that's why it said the point 2 comma 2. Okay. So you're going to put 2 in for x and 2 in for y. 2 equals 4 times 2 plus b. 2 equals 8 plus b. Subtract 8 from both sides. B equals negative 6. So that would go back into this line here. Y equals 4x minus 6. OK, I think we usually do point slope form. This one is in slope. All the answers are in slope intercept form. So I'm going off of what's what's here. And but you're okay. right. You could you could do it in any form that you want. 
Um, but because it's multiple choice, this is kind of standardized test stuff. You have to do it in the format that's given. Okay. All right, looks like number 11 is next here. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right, so find f plus g of x for f of x equals nine minus x squared and g of x equals three minus x. So this, this notation here, it's kind of, it, it, I don't really like it, but that's what they use in books. It means to add the two functions together. You take mm -hmm. function one, nine minus x squared and add it to function two, three minus x, okay? You just literally add them together and then you combine like terms. Do you, uh, is it clear what I mean by that or would you like some explanation? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so the only like terms are the nine and the three. Mm -hmm. So everything else stays the same. Now they generally write it in a descending order, meaning like they want the X squareds first. So yeah. that, that, that operator always goes with the number. So it's minus X squared minus X, plus 12. And then you just match it up to the one that that is uh, given there looks like it's letter B. Okay, that makes sense. Great. Number 12. All right, find the domain of the function h of x equals 5x over x times x squared minus 36. So there's, there's kind of two two rules in math that you have always adhere to. One is you cannot divide by zero. Division by mm -hmm. zero is, is just, it's just the worst thing in the world, math terms. So you're, what you're looking for here is where does the bottom part, where does the bottom part equal, equal zero? Okay. Um, so this, this was related to your, your section on factoring, maybe your solving um, chapter unit. So you have to set each term equal to zero. You set each term equal to zero. Now on the left, it's already solved for, like there's nothing to do, okay? Yeah. On the right though, there is something to do. Now before, before you do anything here, when you have a quadratic, do you remember how many solutions you should always get when you're solving a quadratic? One. So one is true for lines, okay? Quadratic, think of a quadratic, remember it's U-shaped, like something like that. Oh yeah. It's gonna hit in two spots here. So you're gonna get two solutions. There's, there's two ways to do this. One is to factor this on the left. Have you seen difference of squares before? Yeah. Okay, so I, I'd probably factor this and say, okay, it's X minus six, X plus six, difference of squares. And then you set each term, equal to zero. You set x minus six equal to zero and x plus six equal to zero. There, there's your two solutions, okay? X is six and x is negative six. Is that, okay. is that clear so far? Yeah. All right. Now, sometimes you get so down into one of these problems, you're like, what are we even trying to do here? We're trying to figure out where the bottom is zero. The bottom is zero at zero, six, and negative six, okay? So on a number line, and this is, this is not to scale. If that's zero and that's negative six and that's, that's positive six, okay? These are the excluded values. Like these are the ones that it can't be. Mm -hmm. so, so those are the open, open circles, all right? And then from negative infinity to infinity, everything else is okay. Everything else is good. It's just at those places that there's a problem. All right, so notice your answer. Answers have uh, various intervals. You're looking for the one that contains the interval from minus infinity to minus six, minus six to zero, zero to six, and six to infinity. So notice that each of these intervals corresponds to a place on the, on the number line here. Hello? Yes. Okay. 
Any yeah, questions yeah. on that? You got any, any questions on that or any follow up on that? Um, no, that makes sense. All right. So uh, the next I've got the next page I've got is uh, starts with 14 uh, going to 15. Does that, uh, does that seem right to you? Um, I got I did 14, but we could go over it again. Oh, it's up to you. I, I was going to go to 15 if you would like. OK, yeah, let's just go to 15. OK. All right, so this one, um, we're gonna actually use a graphing tool that uh, maybe you've used before. I like using Desmos, have you heard of that before? Yeah. Awesome, okay, let me pull it up real quick and we'll talk about how to, to do this uh, when we are graphing. All right, so let me new share uh, the screen right here. All right, so I'm gonna graph the first one, X equals absolute value Y plus three. All right, and then close the absolute value. So the symmetry that we're looking for here, it, it has to look the same sort of top right and bottom left or top left and bottom right. And do you kind of see this one does not look like that at all? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of that one here. Next one is Y equals X cubed plus three. Now, actually, let me, this is a better one. If it was just X cubed, do you agree that kind of the top right looks the same as the bottom left? It's sort of rotated. Yeah. So that's what it means to be with respect to the origin. The problem is as soon as you add this three in here, it's no longer symmetric with respect to the origin. Yeah. All right. So that one's out as well. Process elimination here. 25x squared plus 4y squared equals 100. So is this one symmetric with respect to the origin? Basically, is the thing in the top right the same as what's in the bottom left, just kind of rotated down? And I would say it is. The yeah. same question applies, well, is the part in the top left the same as the bottom right? And I would, mm -hmm. I would agree that it probably is. So C is looking really good. But let's yeah. go ahead and graph the last one. We don't have to do, we don't have to do that much effort here to to graph this. Um, there is a numerical way to do it, but this one's usually pretty, pretty good. Okay. This one is symmetrical about the y-axis. Okay. Because mm -hmm. what's on the right is the same as what's on the left. Okay. So looks like letter, letter C is the uh, best choice there when you're looking at that. All right, let's see if we can find another problem to do do here real quick. Looks like 17 is it. Um, yeah. All right. So one one option here, which you could do, especially in standardized tests, is you could just try the answers. There There is a better way, though. You, you don't want to do that. Um, you want to sort of use the um, approaches you've been learning in class. So the way absolute value work is there's like a case one, case two. And it's, okay. it's, it's the part inside absolute value equal to the number. And then it's the part inside the absolute value equal to negative of the number. Okay. Now in both cases, these are quadratics and you, you probably had a unit on solving quadratics. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the constant to the other side of the equation. Mm -hmm. Same thing over here on the right. Okay, and the factoring here, which we really don't have enough time to get into, but the factoring in both of these. You do like the X thingy? You, you wanna find two numbers that multiply to six, but add up to like negative five in the case of the round on the right. Yeah. And, and that can be a little bit awkward because you're like, wait, it's one and six, two and three. No, they're, they're both negative, okay? So it ends up being X minus two, X minus three. On the right here, neg when you're trying to find two numbers and multiply to negative six, but add to negative five, it ends up being one and negative six. So X plus one, X minus six, like that. We're still not done though. You have to set each of them equal to zero, X plus one equal to zero, X minus six equal to zero, X minus two equal to zero, X minus three equal to zero. So that's X equals negative one, X equals six, x equals two, 
and x equals three. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so unfortunately we do have to stop right here just because I got I've got another lesson coming up, but I do want to uh, if mom's available just quickly talk to her if she's not I can just get her through text.